A massive amount of effort in the big weather goes into keeping the boat going in the right direction. You'll see here that the waves are coming under the boat from both sides as well as from behind. They pass under the hull to the left and then the next one will come across and it will pass under to the right. Not having an autopilot or any sailing assistance, a lot of the power that goes through the oars is purely to keep the boat straight. I'd watch the pennant attached to my radio aerial which you can see fluttering in the corner. If that slightly got out of line with the wind and the wind caught the rear quarter of the boat from either side, it would spin your beam onto the waves and obviously that's not a good position to be in. To combat the force of the wind, the pressure on each oar has to be applied individually. You can see occasionally that one oar will completely stop and in fact in big conditions I rode for hours with a single oar. Day 15, I think, today. Today was the day that I discovered my new foot position, <coughs> which dramatically changed how I, how I rode and probably gave me about half a knot an hour, which is a massive difference, despite the weather being <coughs> atrocious in the sense of no wind and no current, no anything. I had a really good day, did 30 miles from 9am to 7.30. See what happens overnight and tomorrow morning and it might be a 50 mile day out of really, really bad conditions, which would be brilliant, which means if we get a little bit of weather going our way, that 60 miles might be on the card, so it was a good day. It's very hot today as well. I'm gonna open a letter, which is from the King family. I won't be surprised if there's something strange in here. All right, this is just a present. <laughs> it's water wing. <laughs> Of all the things to fill up my boat with <laughs> and weigh me down. Froggy water wings. Uh, Katie, you're a star, is all I can say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just in case my life jacket doesn't work <laughs> and I've got 2,000 miles to swim. So, day 17, <clears throat> another hard one at the cold face. Um, 30 miles exactly since nine o'clock this morning so it's not bad progress that puts us in shout with a bit of drift overnight in shout of uh, 50 again tomorrow <coughs> today was uh, or yesterday rather finished at nine o'clock this morning was 50.8 not doing too bad it's hard work though we need the weather to change give us a bit of wind there was a bit more wind today but it was a messy messy sea so hard work keep cracking away another 50 miles and get us a bit closer Got a letter here from Colin. Thank you, Colin, for the Kit Kat. One of my favourite things. Firstly, happy birthday on the 24th of January. Uh, be it coming or gone. Welcome to the 50 Club. <laughs> Forgot you're a little bit older than me, Colin. I just read this amazing book, The Ghost Runner, all about another John, John Tarrant. Oh, I know John Tarrant, the extraordinary man who nobody could stop. His Olympic dreams were crushed, banned as an amateur, and branded professional. Um, for a few quid he declared receiving as a teenage boxer. He became an ultra runner, setting world records at 40 and 100 miles. He was like you, tough and determined. He had a favourite poem he used to recite to himself before races. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you, you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to ride. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can even win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. John, you know the battle isn't in the road. The battle is in the mind. Thanks, Colin. That's brilliant. Excellent stuff. Okay, hope you can um, see, and this is not too spooky with the with the light on. I'm trying to keep the, the battery power down to a minimum. So it's day 19, it's 9pm. I should be fast asleep by now, but I've just been out and readjusted my drogue. I put a drogue out tonight. The weather's been massive today. I had quite a good day mileage-wise, but the waves, uh, they're probably about 12 to 15 feet, but they're really, really powerful and breaking all the time. So we put a drogue out <coughs> to hold the, the back quarter of the boat into the wind, and that wasn't working. The waves are still crashing over the right hand side of the boat. So I've been out and attached the drogue now, as well as to the back, it's attached to the front. So hopefully that should hold us into the wind and we should still drift in the right direction. I haven't done a blog today because I can't, as you can see, 
and bobbling all over the place. I can't, just can't kite. So, we should try and get some sleep, maybe listen to an audio book or something, get up in the morning and do it all over again. So this is day 20. I'm going to show you what we're uh, contending with today. We've got 25 knot winds, a big swell, and the swell's coming in two or three different directions as well, so it's a bit confusing. Week three was all a bit blowy, but it was just starting to dawn on me that the ocean is the place that I really belonged, and I was feeling at home, comfortable with the boat, and happy in the big weather. If it's possible, despite all the toil and hard work, I was having an even better time. I haven't been getting any sleep. The weather changes. From this morning, it was nice and organised. And when the sun comes up about an hour afterwards, the sea goes wild for about an hour and a half. It's just absolutely a real mess all over the place. Big swells still, but little swells in between and bobbing all over the place. day 23 and you can see it's still light and I'm in the cabin I've finished already I need to move to uh, another time zone I'm getting up in the, in the dark and road for three hours before it gets light and then finishing before it goes dark it was a relatively good day it's hard work the uh, winds not coming from quite the right place as always it's always hard work and then tonight it got really kind of messy and um, I got swamped three times it's a really narrow channel between going west and trying to keep our track and uh, I was too close to the to the crossing swell and got swamped three times so bailed out and we'll leave it till tomorrow. I still did my 30 miles so that's pretty good. Just have to put the road rope out and just to hold us on course. So we, don't, we don't want to go north, we don't want any of that, we want to go straight to Barbados. So day 23, last night has got to be the scariest, scariest, well I guess scariest, the toughest night I've had so far. The weather had been big all day and struggled on and actually done quite well. And did my 30 some miles and, and decided to quit. And then tried to get the boat to hold in the right direction so we could get a few miles drifting at night. But there was a, a cross swell. So we were drifting on the 250, 260 degree swell which is fine. And that was holding okay. But there was a swell coming right at 90 degrees along the along the trough and these waves were not small waves 15 12 13 14 15 feet dropping white water smacking into the side of the boat i tried all sorts of different things with uh, trailing the rope off different corners of the boat drove straight out the back nothing worked and about 11 o'clock 11 30 a massive wave hit the side of the boat nearly capsized. Went so far over that I was laid kind of where the camera is now on the side of the boat. As the pressure of the wave eased off, the boat popped back up and there was st stuff all over obviously. So then I decided that because the drogue wasn't working and the ropes weren't working etc etc I'd put the power anchor out, which I did. It took me three, three times to, to do it because couldn't work out why the boat was drifting so fast when the power anchor was in the water. Obviously something to do with the current and it turns out we were, I'm in a cross current at the moment that's going northwest. So that sucked me north, which is not a good thing. Got up this morning, had to sort out all the power anchor and the malarkey and bail the boat out, sort everything out. Then we got going, did 30 miles. And, but anyway, so we're kind of back on track. The weather's eased off a bit now, so we are tracking 250 degrees, which is fine. And then we're gonna we need to get another 25 miles, I think, till we get out of this cross current. And then next stop is Barbados. Went into the 1500s, I think, today, or if not already, it could be first thing tomorrow morning. So less than 1600 miles to go. Day 25, and uh, I've stopped my afternoon break. We're going to have a look at the underside of the boat, hanging over the side and sticking my head under. So I'm going to go down first and see what we can see.
So there we go. That looked incredibly good actually. We've been out here nearly four weeks. Now there was hardly a thing. I could see a couple of tiny, tiny little growths, that's all. But what a stunning colour the water is as well. Absolutely incredible. One thing I did forget to do was to take my shirt off. So I think I might need a dry shirt. So there we go. Underneath the boat. So it was hot, hot, hot today. It was hard work again this morning. Made 50 yesterday, so that's two 50s in a row. And, and I did okay today, 31 miles by the close of play, so a little bit of run overnight. And another good three hours in the morning and should see me in the mid 50s, which might get me to that 350 for the week. Um, it could be hard, hard going, but there you go. So, so that was today. No wildlife, no nothing exciting, just kind of mediocre wind, very modest swell this morning. It got a bit easier tonight, actually seems to be easier in the evenings. So I'm, oh, I've got a letter here from Mr. Bedford, so Lord only knows what this says. I'm not a religious man, but I'm slightly nervous to open this. Dear John, <clears throat> hope your journey is progressing well and that your hands and arse are not too sore. I spoke to your missus again today and she seems fine. As promised, if this all goes wrong, I promise to look after her. She seems quite excited by the thoughts. I'm sure she's looking good. Exposed cells are good and Cheryl seems to have a, a good handle on things, so in truth there's no need to rush back. Hendon are falling apart in the league, as predicted, but at least we, we were top of the league for a while. Arsenal won another game the other day, so things are looking up. Who would have thought it? Played 20, won 7, drawn 4 and lost 7. Still your ladies team are going well as usual, <laughs> so things are too bad. You bugger. <laughs> Maybe they should put some of the ladies in the in the flipping men's team. No need to reply to this, but if you do, please make sure the bottle is airtight. Enjoy the topic. Oh, by the way, hope happy Christmas and New Year. We'll try to make it to your surprise birthday party. How's the fishing? Well, I haven't had time to fish. <laughs> and uh, there better not be a bloody surprise birthday party. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much. That's it, signing off for day 26, I think I said. Well, what a bloody day. The last day of the fourth week. So it's kind of neat being at sea for four weeks. And after three really good 50 mile days, I got up expecting just to, I finished off yesterday's 50 miles and thought, well, here we go, we're knocking another one. The wind just disappeared at some point in the, in the middle of the night. There's no swell, no wind, and hard work. I mean, just unbelievably hard work. Well, normally my three hour sessions, I'd get nine miles out of a three hour session. I was doing three and a half and only getting eight. So I did two of those and then I pushed on harder tonight. I managed to get ten out of a four hour session. So normally where I'd be at about 30 miles at this time of the day, I'm four miles behind where I should be, which doesn't sound much, but I don't, I don't think we're going to drift that far tonight because the wind's not that strong. Although there is a little flutter in the flags, which there hasn't been all day. So it's been bloody remorseless steaming hot just i just dipped about with the, the buttons on the oars did a bit of adjustment there because the boat's so heavy when the water's not moving changed the angle of the uh, gate or gate and it did make a little bit of difference and made made pulling on the oars a bit easier <laughs> it was just checking i'll not be there by bloody next christmas <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to say it was just really really hard best bit of news today is that I brought two bed sheets, so as we're at four weeks, I've changed. So I'm assuming I'm going to get there in less than eight weeks. I don't know what to happen today. I might need to have some bed sheets flown in, I think. So I can't, can't really say much more. I need to do this little blog thing and then get some sleep. I'm going to get up a bit earlier in the morning and try and crack in another harder session just to... I'm, I'll be amazed if I, if I salvage a 45 from, from this. The Wode Wallaby Ocean Rower. End of week four, and I've got to say I was feeling pretty chipper. Nearly halfway, properly out in the deep ocean. About as far away from land as I was gonna get. I can only say that the longer I was out there, the more I loved absolutely everything about being on the ocean. Despite losing a 300 pound oar through being overly tired and being a bit stupid, coming as close to capsizing as possible without actually going over, I was still coping okay. Would the weather get worse? Would I actually capsize? Only one way to find out and that's to keep pushing on. 